Now you're voting. Thanks. 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 Hi guys. So sorry, I uh, was a little bit late here. Uh, had a technical difficulty. It is Sunday morning after all. So um, anyway, hopefully you can see me and hear me great. And um, so this is basically hat hey guys. on the cheap. So sorry, uh, I was a little bit late here. And um, sorry, again, I had to do that because I had to mute myself. So anyway, uh, let's get this party started. Um, my husband's in the background somewhere. I'm hoping he will make me a mimosa since it's Sunday morning at Cogs. And that's how I always do Sundays at Cogs, please. Um, so today we are going to cover doing some web. Uh, we are going to cover doing some uh, some easy, cheap. Uh, hat making things. Um, today we're going to use something called buckram. Uh, this is buckram. It basically you can buy it by the roll. This is the only true millinery tool or um, substrate that you're going to use. Uh, it's not that expensive, and um, it's basically not that expensive and. Uh, yeah, like I said, you can get it online. I plan on putting a list online on my Facebook page, Design by Night Accessories, probably um, tonight or tomorrow. And um, so you'll be able to get a list of where you can get some of the supplies that I have talked about. So um, I talked a little bit about this yesterday, but some of you might not have been on. You can get cheap poly um hat blocks basically at a place called uh frank's cane and rush supply um i am just going to go over really quick uh how you can use buckram which is an inexpensive uh tool to uh basically block something on this hat on this um form I'm gonna use, make a little caplet. So I'm not gonna have the whole hat. I just want like a little, almost like a pillbox type hat. So I'm gonna start with my buckram. You kind of figure out a rough, how big of the piece you need. And then you cut it. So I know I'm gonna want something kind of round because it's a round shape. Morning, everyone. I see you're all wishing me uh, a good morning. I think it's getting better because Michael is, I hear him opening champagne in the background. So, um, Unlike wool or some of the other things, buckram is basically, uh, it's kind of like a fine mesh setting. Uh, hopefully you can kind of see it. Basically almost like a screen. And then um, it's got sizing on it. So it's got something on it that makes it uh, like sticky and hold. This something is basically either steam or water activated. Thank you, darling. See, he's so good. So for this one, I'm going to use water. Nothing fancy. I have my ye bucket of water here and you kind of just dip it in there. Um, we're gonna keep it in there for a few minutes. And while that um, gets to the place we want, I will go ahead and talk about um, and talk about buckram. So buckram is, I know uh, I already talked, it's got sizing on it, but a lot of times when you are making buckram, um, it's stiff, but when I am forming it on something, a lot of times basically what I do is I use two layers. So I'll put one layer down and then do another layer over it to make it nice and sturdy. Um, basically you can do one layer, it just, um, won't hold up as well. Um, and basically, um, you can even do three layers if you want it really stiff. So, uh, 
but today I'll just do probably the one layer so I can show you how it works. And then basically after you, you form it onto uh, some kind of block or some kind of form or whatever we're gonna do, and I'm gonna show you some oddball things. Um, you put it aside. Uh, it's a little bit like paper mache, but the thing is it's actually a, um, it's a fabric, so it won't, um, it won't really like mold or it won't fall apart. Um, let's see here, it seems snarky, but I actually do wanna make a tinfoil top hat, top, um, top hat. You can totally do that. I think if you did it, you would still need some kind of form underneath of it. So you can see now this, it went from something stiff like this, and you can see it's kind of like, almost like a rag. And I'm gonna bring it out. I can feel the sizing on my hands. I'm gonna kind of move this to the side. And then you kind of just drape this on. Now with buckram, basically you're always gonna cover it. You're never probably, I'm not saying, never say never, but you're probably, not going to um, have it where it is just buckram and nothing else. Um, usually you use buckram if you want to make a, a, a fabric covered hat. Um, will buckram hold up in the rain at all? Yes, it would hold up, but if you get fully, fully drenched, it would. It probably won't. Um, it's not gonna fall apart on you, but it, if it gets wet again, like really soaked wet, like I just soaked this, it has a chance of losing its form. Um, you could probably put a little bit of waterproofing on it, like the waterproofing spray and it would help, but it's still not gonna be 100% um, waterproof. Um, have you ever used double buckram instead of layering it? Um, I they did have different weights of buckram, and I have used the the thicker one. You could probably use it, but um, I always just layer it because I find even with the double buckram, it's still stronger to um, kind of mush it together. So you can see, I have this down. It's got creases in it. It's got like little pieces, but this isn't a problem because I'm gonna have my general shape and I plan on covering this with fabric. So, and I'll show you, I'll do another piece. Um, my scissors and I'll throw this in the water. Again, I made this one a little bit smaller. Um, this was probably a little bit bigger because I'm just gonna use this as a cap. but it's super easy to work with. It's a lot easier than wool um, and some of the heat activated, uh, and some of the heat activated um, fabrics and things that you use with millinery. You won't burn yourself. This is a really good starting place for you. Um, you can use it, like I said, with cheap hat blocks. I'm also gonna show you with, uh, I made some weird hat blocks from while that sits and gets soft, I'll show you some. I made some other hat blocks from just things around the house. So this, uh, you know those cardboard boxes that you get at Michael's? This was basically a, a heart-shaped box that, um, that I got at Michael's. I took the lid off of it and then see if you can see inside. You know the can of spray foam? It's the kind that you, uh, you put in it gets really big and then it hardens up. So basically what I did is I took the cardboard box, I sprayed it with some spray foam inside so it would keep its shape when I'm pressing on it. And then again, um, press seal. Press seal, this is really important if you're using, if you're gonna shape things on other odd pieces cause it helps you, um, it basically, it helps you, A, if you're putting water on the cardboard, it's gonna disintegrate, so it protects it that way. And B, it helps get the buckram so you can remove it for, from the form. That's one of the hardest things to do sometimes. Let's see here. Um, 
Yes, you could totally cover buckram in foil after you have um, whatever it, you know, whatever is done. Um, the buckram would give it a nice base. So you could completely do that. Um, so back to this, you can see I did that. And here is, I actually went ahead and formed buckram over the shape. So you can see it turned out, you can make it like a little pillbox hat or the other thing I was thinking about is doing another piece on the opposite side and then putting these together so I could have a heart shape basically that would stand up that would be double sided. Um, yes, buckram scraps, I keep them. Itsy bitsy little piece. I have these, and then I keep the um, small little pieces. Sometimes uh, when you are forming things, um, sometimes if there's like a weak little spot, a lot of times I will almost use these as a band aid. I will cut a little piece and kind of form it onto a place that has a hole. So yeah, I um, I don't throw away much of anything. I keep all all the scraps. So you, so you can see, I have another piece. And again, I can feel it like, it's kind of like a gluish, a glue sort of. And then you kind of just flatten it down. If you have a more difficult shape, which I'm going to show you, I'm gonna actually do the heart shape because that's more difficult. You would basically um, need pins and everything, but because this is what I am actually just going to take, Elastic, it's really good to use, and a pin. And after I flatten it all down and lay on it, put the elastic and just kind of pin it on, and then that will hold the the buckram down. Um, like I said. Let it sit for a little while. Uh, let it sit for 24 hours. You want it absolutely completely dry. Um, you can use, a, if you wanna try to quicken it a little bit, you could use a hair dryer on it. But again, um, just because it's dry on top doesn't mean the, the bottom layer is dry. And if it's wet at all, it could possibly mess up your state your um your shape and of course my pin just unpinned so let's try this again and for some reason I'm having a real hard problem this morning it's probably I have haven't had enough of my mimosa to actually function this morning. Okay, so there we go. You can see it's not perfect, more likely than not. Like I said, I was kind of planning on making this just like a little cap. So all this crap down here will basically be cut and you won't see it. So I'm gonna put this aside. I'm gonna actually rinse off my hands because I've got a bunch of, uh, bunch of sizing on it. Oh, so you're talking about coming buckram and foil to actually making it, um, I guess, waterproof. You could do that, but the problem is if you are, if your if your end thing is in a foil hat and you want to use fabric, it's going to make it very hard for you to cover the um, hat in fabric. And I have a hat that is partially covered. You can see here is a buckram heart, and I started and I stopped it so I could so I could show. So you can see I'm kind of taking, you take the uh, material and you work it on there the best as possible and then you stitch it on and I hand stitch it. It can be ugly underneath because basically when this is finished, I'll put a lining in it. But if you had foil underneath to protect it, it would be very hard for you to, it would kind of be hard for you to sew through the foil. Um, if you sewed through it, it would probably, it might rip the foil. It's gonna dull your needle. Um, it could cause a little bit of like 
um, like, you know how foil is like folding underneath. So you wouldn't get a nice smooth surface when you put your, uh, when you put your fabric on. Um, honestly, uh, there's not very many hats that I know that you can wear in absolute positive uh, pour down rain, um, especially handmade ones. Um, so um, I don't know what to necessarily say if you if you want to wear something like that when it's you know when it's pouring, other than maybe have an umbrella. <laughs> Sorry. Umbrellas are very Um, yes, you can use hot glue um, if you want to, if you were putting foil on it, you could definitely hot glue it on. You don't necessarily even have to sew the fabric on. If you are really comfortable with a hot glue gun, you can, um, you could totally um, put that, cover this in fabric or whatever you wanted with hot glue. The only thing is with hot glue, it, which it wouldn't have a problem with the tin foil, but if you're going to hot glue fabric, you'll notice, um, you'll know that the the hot glue will actually kind of come through the fabric. So that's one of the reasons why uh, I generally sew these. But um, if you're gonna cover it in like paper or you could do vinyl or something like that, you could possibly use uh, hot glue. Um, another thing is too, the fabric that you use on the outside could possibly protect it. For instance, if you get like a duck cloth or an outdoor material, um, some of them, they're not necessarily water um, waterproof, they're more water resistant. And that would help um, if you are out in really, you know, out in the rain or in a moist area. Um, so I'm gonna show you some odd things that I did. I already showed you my heart and I'm gonna actually, um, block that in a minute so I can show you, but I made some other things. So for instance, I'm not sure what I would use it for, but this is just a plain old styrofoam cone. Uh, you can see I put buckram on it. I have the handy dandy. I use a lot of, uh, with along with the press and seal that I have, I use duct tape. Um, the reason being, I, you kind of need a handle. I already loosened this and I use a pallet knife sometimes to go in because you have to work it around because this is basically sticking to the press and seal. So you kind of have to work it, but I use it to pull out. So you can see this is just a plain cone. I covered it in press and seal. I added a, like a little duct tape handle so it'll be easier to get off. And then this is basically the shape I got. So I'm showing you this type of thing saying basically so you can see there are different things around your house. Um, you don't have to buy a hat block. Um, this one was a little bit harder. I had to block it twice, but it, I made a mess of it. You could see when I took it off, but this is just a cup, like a, a plain old glass. It's straight up and down. Um, I'll show you, this is the first one that I did. I wrapped it around there and it did have a top, but um, it didn't work out so good. So I had to cut it off just to get it off. But then I did a second one and I tried wrapping the buckram in a different way and it totally worked. And then I just added a brim to it. So this is the makings of like a mini top hat. You could cover it in fabric. You could put some wire in it. Like, you know, you could do different things. Another thing with buckram is, and this is an odd, an odd little thing. It can be heat. It can work with heat and steam. So this is actually water. Believe it or not, this is a tiny little um, flat iron that I got free. <laughs> with a, um, that I got free with my big iron, but I'm gonna just spray this a little bit. And then I'm gonna, you could kind of work it to, you could do this with the iron too, but you can work it and the heat and the steam will kind of start forming. So you could see how that's curly. Um, you could probably use the curling iron too. Just know that you're gonna get gunk all over it. So you're gonna have to scrub it. So you can see a little water because you need the steam and then the heat and it does and it does that. Um, other things that's cool with buckram is if you want to, you can use it with an iron and stick pieces together. So for instance, to do this brim, um, you don't need to wet it. 
and put it together. What you can do is, and we're gonna take some of the pieces that I have just so you can see it. I'm gonna take these two. I'm gonna get myself something to iron on. And you can, now it takes a little bit of oomph and a little bit of practice as far as, like it's starting to stick together, but if you get some of the steam going out, which I'm gonna, there we go. So basically the water and the steam at helps activate the, the sizing in it. So you can see it's starting to kind of stick together. Now, if I wanted it as a brim, which I did for the one thing, and mind you, I usually use patterns um, or I make patterns, paper patterns for things, but because I'm showing you this, I'm willy nilly just cutting things. So I have that, some of the edges are still going. So I'm gonna hit it with my spray bottle, which like I said, this is just water, but not a lot, you don't wanna soak it. So, and you can see that stuck together and it's kind of hard. So it's really good for a, um, for a base. It's kind of coming apart a little bit there. So you want to take your time and really work all the edges and, and do what you need to do to make sure it's all together. Um, blocking hats takes patience to a certain point, which is funny because I am so not patient but I, this is the one thing I do have patience with. And again, if you want to, say I wanted to curl this. If you use some steam, you can kind of see, and you can start curling it. So very much like a curling iron or flat iron, you can use an iron to start giving it a little bit of shape. So, for instance, the hat that I'm wearing now, this is a buckram based hat. I did not form it. I actually used pieces of buckram that I, a big piece of buckram, I made a pattern that I um, basically um, ironed together and then I formed the hat by sewing the different pieces. So it's buckram underneath and then I covered it in fabric. So that would be another way that you can use buckram if you don't want to, um, if you don't want to uh, actually form something. Um, fusible interfacing. So fusible interfacing, you can try to use it. It is, um, there is one that is really, really heavy and I have used it before, but the problem being when you start to Turn, when you start to round it, for instance, like this, instead of being instead of being um, nice and smooth like buckram does, it actually wants to buckle, and it actually wants to um, fold. So it wouldn't necessarily uh, it wouldn't work that great, is what I'm trying to say. Um, I I tried it, um, thinking, hey, let's give this a try, but for you to use one that is heavy enough to use it um, instead of being bendable and malleable, it wants to it wants to be either like straight, like or ninety degrees, like it it'll crease and it'll actually like fold and put marks in. Um, that when you go to cover with fabric, you will actually kind of see. However. When I am doing something like this, which will be the brim of a hat, a lot of times what I'll do is I will use um, a lightweight fusible interfacing, double-sided, to fuse the fabric to the buckram. So I'll, you know, put the, I'll have the buckram already, and then I'll put the interfacing down the fabric, and then I'll iron it. So then that way, I already have the, I already have it on there. So depending how you're putting things together, you could probably, you can fusible interface like a piece 
around like this and then the brim and the top and then you would kind of have to sew it together and put trim on it to cover up like where you're sewing depending on how you put the put the thing on um plastic canvas um i'm not exactly sure about plastic canvas is that the stuff that you use for um like not needle pointing but uh I don't know. It, it looks like a grid. You're going to have to, sorry, I'm not exactly sure. So if you could kind of clean up, if you could kind of let me know what plastic canvas is, I could possibly tell you. Um, okay, so that's ironing. Um, and then the other thing is you can use styrofoam. Since you're not gonna use the iron on this and you're gonna wet and you're going to basically wet form it, I have a nifty little styrofoam cutting tool. If you wanted to, you could feasibly kind of sketch out on the styrofoam what shape you want. This gets really hot really quick. You can also shave this down. And this is just um, the stuff that you use for hats. I mean, um, for hats, for it's floral foam. So you could see this, it cuts like butter basically when it starts. And it's just getting hot enough to do it. So I might have to wait a little bit. But you could use this and start forming your own. I'm not gonna do that right now because it will take a long time. Um, but if you form this block into a shape that you wanted, at that point, you would reinforce it with the press and seal. So it's nice and smooth. And then you could basically block a hat over it. When you're going to block a hat and you're gonna do a form, keep in mind how you're gonna get the form off. So like this one was pretty straightforward because it just pulled out. But if you have a larger top and a small bottom, you're not going to be able to pull the form off without ruining your uh, what you just formed. So keep in mind that like, you know, you can't necessarily have a fluted hat because where you do the top to it, because you need to be able to take the take the base part out of the biggest opening. I hope that makes sense. And let me see if this is hot enough. Oh, there we go. And you can see this costs like $20 on Amazon. It's awesome. And I will show you what I did with it in just a second. I actually, here's something that I did. Uh, that I did um, basically last night. This is a dollar store dollar store doily, cost a buck. Um, and I know because it didn't have sizing in it because it's not buckram. Basically, I used fabric stiffener. Now, if anybody's ever used fabric stiffener before, you know basically it's just white glue. That's pretty much what it is. So it's like white glue and water. I usually do like a twenty five percent water. Um, 75% mixture, you dip the doily in it and then you can lay it out. I laid it out. Another thing to, that's really nice to use is wax paper. So when you're gonna do something like this or where you're gonna do a brim, like put wax paper down, that way you won't stick to, this won't stick to whatever surface you have because wax paper makes it easy. But you can see I kind of blocked it. I use pins to keep it on. So let me take the pins off and I'll show you. And I also use, um, instead of elastic this time, I use roping. The roping helps you keep a shape. And then you put pins in it. And like I said, this is a dollar store doily. Um, you can do it out of like old doilies. Like I have a ton for my grandma, but like, you know, like I said, if you're starting off or if you don't have money, like things, making a hat doesn't need to be expensive. But your paper works too. Um, 
I just happen to have wax paper handy, so I grab that first, but anything that is nonstick. So I'm gonna take off my, I use nylon roping a lot to help form um, things and to tie it down. So you can see I have this and I'm gonna, and you kind of have to work it out. So this is where I use my palette. So I kind of separate it a little bit, then poop, popped it out. Um, this definitely will not hold up in the rain, but it gives you a nice cute little thing if you're doing like an indoor con. Um, the other thing is too, I was thinking it would be cute making it into like the little, and it's got extra and I'm not gonna cover it, but it would be cute. Like you could, you know, put it up in the back and I could probably iron it and make a little, something like this with, you know, flowers and, um, but it's nice, but you could see this used to be a, sty a full styrofoam ball and I used the styrofoam um, cutter or heat tool to basically cut it in half. And again, I put the, the steel on it and um, to cover it up. And I did that last night and it's basically dry this morning. And um, you could use a little bit of light steam and ironing if you wanted to say, curl up the sides. So I'll do that. And then I would probably take a little stitch and put it in there. You could feasibly make a little tricorn depending on what your, you know, what your shape was. That would be a super cute little like lacy girly tricorn. And then um, now I'm gonna show you actually hat blocking on an odd shape like this. So this one is not gonna be one whole piece. What you're going to do is you do the top first, or you could do, I mean, let me try, let's see. I need to cut a piece that's manageable here. Okay, what time? okay. So I'm gonna try to make this quick because I only have a, like 12 more minutes, but so I have this piece. One of the first things I'm going to do is cut a piece that would go all the way around. And again, if I were taking my time, I would measure this and make it better. So I'm gonna stick this in the water, get it nice and soft. I'm gonna actually use this other piece for the second piece that I put on here. So I'm gonna put that in the water too. And then for the top, you're gonna to figure out roughly the shape of the heart. So you can see I have the shape now. This is where a little bit of sewing knowledge comes in because when we go to fold this down, you're gonna to wanna to make darts for the, for the most part. So I cut little, see if you can see it. I'm gonna go through and cut little V's. They don't have to be perfect. Um, it's just gonna help you have a smooth side. And then I'm gonna dump that in. Um, that goes in the water. While that is in the water, I have this. I am going to go through. And because I didn't take my time to sew, like to cut a nice smooth top, I'm going to do this. And you can see, starting to form this around. And this is where the rope comes in. 
So I'm going to take a piece of the nylon and then I'm going to take some pins and you crease And of course I've got sticky fingers because of the glue, but you crease this and press the pins in through. So that will help keep the shape. So I'm gonna go through. The buckram also, just to let you know, it also stretches as you go around. And then I've got the back part. I usually go through and pull it nice and taut. And pin some of these down. So for sake of time, I'm not gonna go through and do it, but you can see, you get the general gist of it. Um, where the seam is over here, I'm gonna cut it. Unfortunately, I didn't take the time to cut the thicker seam off, but so, I have the outside covered. I'm gonna go through with the top, put it on. Actually, let me bring it out first. And then you go through and this will be very like sticky and malleable and all that good stuff. So you kind of just go through and push, pull it, Stretch it, um, push all of this down. Like I said, I'm doing a really quick job here, so it's not perfect, but you can see that's the top. And then I take the second layer and I'm gonna put that around also. So this is where I'm gonna start because I have the second layer, pinning it all down. And actually I want to use, you can use push pins. They have smaller pins too that are millinery pins, but for something like this, you can just put push pins all the way around. And yes, these are like the push pins that you get off of, like that you use on a, a board or something, you know like a map, whatever. And I'm gonna do it along this edge because I wanna make sure that bottom of the heart is nice and sharp. Keep going around and I'm hurrying. So you wanna make sure this is all smooth, which again, if I'm not hurrying, you take your time and do it. Um, it's gonna stay wet for a while. So you have time to smooth it all out and make it look good. Now, here's the thing. You're gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna get some buckram and I'm gonna make this and I'm gonna make this shape. Just know the first time you do something with the shape, it is probably not gonna turn out. Basically, whatever um, happens is usually I figure out the shape I make it once and I'm like, oh crap, that didn't work out the way I wanted it. And then basically from that original thing, and I'm not saying all the time, sometimes it works out if it's a simple shape. But if you want to do something that's a little bit crazier like this, um, like the heart, like for instance, I learned that um, I don't, you would think you would want to put the top one first, but I, but you don't, because basically what happens is, when you were taking it off, because I was, um, cause I was taking, when you go to take it off because the top has like the little things that come over. When I go to use my spatula, which is basically just like a, a, a putty knife. Um, when I went up there, it took, it actually kind of crinkled those little pieces. So I always like to do now a sides first, then a top and then side again it'll make it easier for you to basically get it off. So um, 
I have like four more minutes. Does anybody have any questions? I try to cover a lot. Um, I'll try to answer all your questions, but I'm not sure if I missed anything. So please, if I didn't answer your question that you had, um, ask it again so it comes up right at the top of the, the queue. And to be honest, um, with Laura, see you like the pushpin idea. Um, Usually I like to use the metal head push pins too, because that way if you have to go back and hit this with some kind of heat, it's not gonna melt. Um, I couldn't find my metal push pins cause I'm trying to reorganize my back room. So, and then somebody um, somebody earlier said, uh, do you keep the scraps? So yes, I do keep the scraps and I have a perfect reason right here why I'm going to use scraps because, because I was in a hurry, I have, see this little area right there? It's not perfectly covered and stuff. Now I, I can put another, with this one I only put one top one because it's basically the sides that are keeping the shape. I could um, form another top on it, which I would probably suggest. Or if you have like a little boo like that, because when this gets wet, it's kind of like gauze and it will rip a little bit. So you can, let's see here. Um, the cardboard helps stabilize the buckram. Um, it could, but like with buckram, if it gets a little bit moist or if there's, um, or if it's muggy, um, or there's condensation or anything like that, the buckram will come back where cardboard has a chance to, um, rot and mold and stuff like that, where buckram won't do that as much. So that's the only thing about it. So you can see here, I actually just use that as a little like band-aid, my little pieces to cover up the, and since this is getting covered, it's not gonna make a difference. And a lot of times when I cover these, I'll take a very thin layer of batting and put it between the, the buckram and the fabric because the thin layer of batting or um, you can use some other things. Um, sometimes I use felt but the thin layer of felt or batting will help give you, cause you'll know cotton, cotton will show every little bump and thing, especially, or satin. So um, that'll help, to, that'll basically, if you put a, a thin layer of that on there, it'll help keep things smooth. Um, do you leave the rope in and simply trim it when it's done? Um, no. So here's my final one. You can see I took the rope off and it keeps its form. The rope is simply just to like, when you have creases, it basically, um, you put it in there to make it nice and crease. Cause you can see there's was the rope. Um, I think you have to do the top separately because you can pull that shape off. It didn't have the wider top. Um, this one, I did the top together because it's straight all the way around and um, I don't have to pull it off. Um, if you're gonna do something more like this, a lot of times it's better to, like I had a hard time getting this one off. So it's kind of like a, it's kind of a little bit of a guessing game. Like I said, um, you're gonna be doing odd shapes. Like say you do an old gelatin mold or something like that. It's just a matter of, um, trying it out. And like I said, um, a lot of times you'll do one and you'll be like, ah, it didn't turn out exactly the way I wanted, or it's not coming off easily or anything like that. And a lot of times when it's dry, you have to sit here and kind of do this and kind of work, work it out. So it'll remove because this is basically kind of glue and it wants to stick to the surface. So that's why we use the press and seal, but it also helps to like, kind of clean it up. Um, talking about So a fluted hat, so this one's a fluted hat that I have in my head. Um, depending on what the shape is, this one I actually formed and sewed together. Um, if you want to do a, a fluted shape, Say you wanna do um, something that is like big like this to the top and small at this bottom, kind of more of a Mad Hatter hat. You couldn't put the top on it. Basically you would have to wait because what you're gonna do is you're gonna push like a push pop. You're gonna push the form out of the bigger end. 
And then at that point, you could put the top on it. So um, I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, you can contact me on um, Facebook and I can try to clarify it or I can do a little video for you to show. Um, oh yeah, I did. So when I was doing the rope, I put it on the first time, but I didn't keep the second layer. Um, so when I was going through again, I removed the rope and put it back on. So not a double air rope. And um, I am out of time now, guys. Thank you for joining me for this morning. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, contact me. And um, next up is Steampunk Wild West Arcade, filled with uh, Brett King. So please uh, stay tuned because I'm going to stay tuned because I'm sure it's going to be super fun. And um, there's been a lot of great presenters. So have a, a really good Sunday. Drink lots of mimosas and stay tuned. Thanks, guys.